Oh, mail bag. This is a piece of test gear. We'll check that out last. Let's look at these little bags first, get them out of the way, then we'll get stuck into this thing. So don't forget to click like and subscribe if it's your first time you've been here. I make all sorts of stuff, not just mailbag videos, I fix lots of things. So, lots of electronics and things like that. So if it's your first time you've been here, then yeah. This is perfect. I was actually looking for some of these yesterday. Excellent. I knew I'd pull some. <laughs> that just hadn't arrived yet. There's a whole bunch of adapters for like quarter inch and camera mount adapter stuff. Like, for example, so what I wanted to do yesterday was actually get this mount here, which is quite an expensive mount thing. I've never actually used it. But I want to move my camera, which I normally use in live streams, which is on this desk here. It focuses down this desk. And it's on this fixed mount, and it's a bit of a pain because I do want to move the camera around a little bit sometimes, and it's just a bit fiddly. I mean, it's, it's okay, but I wanted to make it better. So my intention was actually to use this mount instead. But I needed to adapt it to make it work. So I could screw this end in. That was okay. I could screw that one end or the other. But I couldn't screw this end in because it's a larger system. So I'm hoping that one of these, like, I don't know, this one here, will screw in like that. Takes it down to the standard size. And I can now screw this into the camera end or the other end, whichever one. And then I've got my flex for mount. I can just do this, move the thing around wherever I want with this mount. It's quite stiff, it's quite a strong mount. I can't what it's called now, it's actually a brand name. It's actually branded, but I can't remember what it was now. I've had this for a couple of years and never actually had the chance to use it really because I didn't have the stuff anyway. So the stuff has arrived. So we've got these different sizes of adapters, there's reducers, all kinds of stuff. These aluminium parts. These are the main ones I want to use, these things here. And these things here. So I can reduce the sizings. Adapt the sizing sort of one, so that's brilliant. Excellent. I can actually get this thing set up on my camera, which I used to do in the live streams, and hopefully make it a bit easier to move around. Excellent. Don't forget, there'll be links for these things down below, too. Anyone that does YouTube or camera stuff will probably want these. These weren't that expensive either, I think. Some more car stereo cables. So I showed one not long ago, actually which I've still got a sitting on my desk over here. It might be the same kind of thing. This one also just got arrive. Check out the wire colours. The wire colours are the same. Yep, wire colour schemes are the same on that plug, so that's obviously a standardised thing. And this is for Toyota car. This one doesn't have the audio system, so this one's got audio connectors on it. This was one I got last time. And they pass through from this plug here. Whereas this one doesn't have that, it's got a different kind of plug, it's got this style instead, which is fine. This is for the steering wheel controls, or is this one the steering wheel controls, I don't know, anyway. So if you've got an aftermarket stereo and trying to put it into a Toyota car, you can use this to hopefully connect it up. So I've got two different versions, because I wasn't quite sure which one I'm going to need, and they're going to be very similar to each other. Um, I mean, these are the, the common connectors there, those are the most common ones there. And you've got these other accessory ones which are basically the same, I think. And that one's the same connector there. And this one here is the same apart from not having audio wiring on it as well. So if you've got a amplifier system, um, this one will work, this one won't. Most likely, I don't know. Basically the same thing. And as I've always done, is I've gone overboard and got more than I need. Because, yes, what I do. It's been that long, it's only a couple of weeks, that's pretty good. So, some of the shipping's actually been quite quick, it's quite surprising. Um, I've had stuff I'm still waiting for though. This stuff which has taken a long time, but there's also stuff which has been quick, this has been quick. These are some more of these W5500 LAN adapters for using on a Duino or ESP32, whatever. So they're basically a RJ45 to SPI interface. And so there's software available, like the actual um, the support on Arduino IDE for these things and there's stuff out there for how to code them and actually communicate with the things. Now I did actually build a module which is sitting right over here actually. I've recorded some video on this but I haven't got it working fully yet. I've got some weird things going on. So I built this with a custom board which is sponsored by PCBWay which I'll be doing a separate video on. And there's the module there built onto this board. 
Now the module was working, I had it all working fine, I could talk to the internet, the CSP32 can talk to the internet and get the time and all sorts of stuff through the LAN port, that's all working fine. But I've got some issues here with the communication with the LAW modules, something weird's going on there, because now I can't talk to LAW modules for some reason, I don't know what's going on, they shouldn't affect each other, so I probably made a mistake or something on this board, I need to look into it, but I need to dig into this more, I might do that this week. But um, this module is almost working. So this is a LoRa to, well, it was a LoRa to Wi-Fi gateway. It's now going to be a LoRa to Wi-Fi and LAN gateway. It does both. So the idea is it will use the LAN primarily, and then it will fall back onto Wi-Fi if the LAN falls over or gets disconnected or damaged or something. The Wi-Fi will still work and use that as a fallback situation. So um, it's same old design, but obviously I've just got modifications on it for um, input surge protection stuff like that as well. So an improvement from my last version. Anyway, that's the project, let's step up to this. But these are what IS modules are for. Links down below. It's a U-Green, um, which means it's a cable. That's 80% off, really. Mm. Um, what is it, 5 minute USB 2 to AF cable? AF? What do you mean AF? What's better than this, the USB 2 cable? Yeah, okay, it's fine, that's exactly what I was betting. Um, if I can get the things to plug together, I should do. So it's a USB male or a female 5 meter cable. Now I've got this on my desk here because I've started playing around a little bit with a bit of software called Test Controller, which is like a Java program, which is written by a guy on the EV blog forum. I've written some scripts for that to use on some of the signal test gear and bits and pieces. So I've written a script for the SDL 1020XE and up through to the 1030X all that four models I supported. I've also done uh, some for the East Tester ET4401. It's also a spin-off from that, which is a very similar unit, slightly different, but very similar. Well, it begins with an R, anyway. Very similar unit. I did, I did one for that too. But I was also thinking I could do one for my power supply sitting over here too. So just over here is my Siglon power supply, which I, to be honest, I really use it. I have used it, but it doesn't get much use, to be honest. I, I, Kind of pulled it on a whim. You know, I did a review on this particular unit and I liked it and I thought, oh, I'll buy one. This is a 16 volt 8 amp power supply um, and it's got graphing and stuff on it and that sort of stuff. It's quite a nice little supply. Yeah, let's get this out of the way. All right, so it's got output sensing as well. So it's, it is quite a capable supply, but I haven't used it much. But what I was thinking about doing is actually hooking up USB cable to it and writing software for this for that test controller as well. So you can control this using test controller. I thought that'd be really helpful and it'd probably help a bunch of people out. So I'm going to do that. But I needed a cable long enough to do that first, so now I've got a cable. Although that said, I think it's got Ethernet on the back as well. <laughs> I haven't pulled it out to have a look. But it might even be using Ethernet control instead. I mean, it could be using Ethernet, it could be using USB. It depends on what I end up using. But I mean, I've got this cable because I needed one because even my East Tester up here, which is sitting up there, so just here is my East Tester sitting here. That I've, so I've done software for that, um, or done a script for that, and I've got a USB cable draped across it saying just long enough to reach my computer, so this is what I really wanted this cable for, is to get these tester going, but um, I'm probably using Ethernet on the on the power supply, if it's got Ethernet LAN port then I'll use that instead, I'll see, Ethernet's just easier to use. Oh well, this is funny, after 80% off between the 11th and 12th of November, it's the 5th of December today. I ordered this after this date. Mm. Right, big box. Let's get into this thing. Mm. Piece of paper. Let's have a look at this. That's exactly what I thought it was. Excellent, it's a piece of tisky. Bubble wrapped. Looks like it's been really well packaged. This end, not so much. It's supposed to be hard box against there, but hopefully it's okay anyway. This obviously has had been bubble wrapped around there. Yeah, it's still got air in there, so it should be fine. 
Box number two. I'll come back when I get to the box. Okay, box number two. So much more on Greg the Zound Boy. <laughs> uh, I'm not intending to drag this out, it just happens. Excellent. Paper packaging, it looks like it's been fairly well looked after. Okay. Hey George, my cat George is here, say hello. Yes George. Curious. She can see herself on the screen. <laughs> it's a cat inception. Inception cat. <laughs> They're confusing, George. I think she's a bit confused. <laughs> so there we go, it's a Keith Lee 225 current source. This one doesn't like it's in too bad a condition. I mean, it's all a bit, you know, old. You know, it is an old unit, but it does seem to be basically intact. Now, on the back of it here, we do have a voltage selection switch. So I'm going to change it over right now before I forget, because there's nothing like forgetting to change that switch over. This is a crosshead screwdriver to do a flat blade job. There we go, 230 volt. Now I might blow it up. But we do have an issue with this cord, so if I get this cord here up, if I get this cord here, so it's got this American plug or something on it anyway, look at the state of that. That is pretty awful. I will not be plugging this in. Okay, so this cord needs replacing. Now if you remember my last mailbag video, I showed a outdoor security light which came with a cable. And as I'm recording two videos at the same time, I've got it sitting right here. Here is the cable which came with the outdoor security light. The only problem is it's not earthed. So I'll have to see if I can use this cable or not. Um, as it's a metal casing, I probably should earth it. So this cable may not be suitable for this unit. I have to check. Generally, I'd say if it's a metal casing, you should earth it. So yeah, maybe this one's not suitable in this case. But I will have a cable somewhere which will have an earth pin on it, which means I will be able to earth this and do the same job. But this is why I get things like this, because this you think, oh, you're not going to use it and throw it away. Well, I use it for one day for something. One day piece of, be a piece of gear, which I can use this on. And I probably already have one somewhere. So, so yes, this needs a new cable put on it. And the plugs will bent as well. It's like awful. Isn't it? Anyway, so I can't power it up right now. I mean, I could, maybe. I mean, let's have a close look at this. No, let's see this. Exposed terminals there, look. So just in here. See that? Exposed terminals.
exposed wires. So, no, I'm not powering this up. So, pulling this thing apart and doing a refurbishment on this will be in a future video. So, make sure that if not already subscribed, you click like and you subscribe and you watch the video on this when it comes out. At some point in time, I don't know when it's going to be. I've got a few projects on right now. I'm extremely busy. I'm actually, even struggling to find time to do mailbag videos, to be honest. So, watch out for it. When you subscribe and click the bell notification, then you'll be notified when I do release a video on this thing. So thanks to my Patreon supporters and people which I have memberships on YouTube to help support the channel. Those memberships help me to buy things like this and little toys to play with and things to, you know, do videos on, right? I wouldn't be able to buy this sort of thing if I didn't have the support of my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. All right, so if you are keen on seeing me do more bits of test gear like this and you have some spare money and you feel generous, then please do consider jumping into my Patreon here and then look, I've got a few offerings there from like as little as $2 a month is the lowest you can do. You can go up to 50 bucks a month if you want, but no one's that crazy, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> $2 a month is all you have to pay, and at $2 a month, if enough people do it, I can buy lots of test gear to do videos on, and that'd be great. YouTube's an expensive hobby. I don't make money on YouTube. I it, Doing all this stuff still costs me money. Even with all the supports I've already got, it still costs me money to buy stuff and do videos, so um, this is all out of my own pocket. But having people support me means I'm losing less money. Which is great. Gives me motivation, helps me to justify buying stuff to my wife. Yeah. Okay. Catch you later. Bye.